But uh, there is a lot going on on these leaves. You see all those bugs? Can y'all see that? That's down in the whirl. What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Daniel and you're watching Triple R Farms. It is Monday, July the 10th and we are back at it here on the farm and uh, it's been a little crazy two weeks. We had a little vacation mixed in with 4th of July came around. We did some work around the farm around the 4th. I uh, didn't get any of that on film. Um, and then last Thursday, Thomas's baseball team, the all-star team started their state district tournament and uh it was supposed to end sunday but uh with rain delays it has been a mess uh it was pretty much raining all weekend and we were playing around rain delays but long story short they uh gather yeah, in the championship game um and it's also two teams from montgomery so out of the whole state district two teams from montgomery are in the championship for the second year in a row and uh it's the best two out of three. We've won one, they've won one. Then we had rain delays all yesterday. Could not get the game in that night. So we're gonna roll it around and we're gonna play the championship game, the final game, uh, Thursday night. So y'all wish Thomas's team uh, good luck in that game and maybe we'll, uh, maybe we'll win the championship. But uh, what I'm doing today, all I've been doing since it's been really wet all weekend, we've had plenty of rain um it's just too wet to get out in the field anywhere on the farms uh so what, I, what i've been doing all day is running around just practically going to every farm and uh taking a ton of tissue samples um i've got a few fields left and then that's going to wrap it up for taking tissue samples but uh while i was riding by this corn i have not walked out in here in a while this is over here in curtis quarter in the valley and uh, i thought i would uh pull a cob Take a look at it, count some kernels, and uh, see what it looks like. That one look good? Yes? All right, let's grab it. So, uh, this looks like about an average year since I've been walking through here. It's not the biggest, not the smallest, so uh, we'll shuck it back, count the kernels, and we'll see what kind of bushels per acre we're going to be looking at. I'll explain how we do that in just a second. I got to get out of, back out of this jungle. Got it. All right, guys, here is how I was taught to count kernels on a corn cob. So, like I said, we've got plenty of moisture right now, probably to take this corn all the way through. Uh, I'm not doing any tissue samples on the corn. Uh, it's just too late to add anything. You're just wasting your money. Uh, you're not gonna get any ROI on it. Um, so, got our corn cob chucked, break it off. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna count the kernels long. So, we're gonna find a row right here and count from right here all the way down to about right there. All right, so we got 34 long. So the next thing to do is we break it open, count the rows around, kernels around. Four, six, eight. Pretty much everything I've looked at this year on our farm has been 16 kernels around. Not the best, but uh, you can make up that with the rows long, kernels long, and you can make it up with uh, kernel weight. If you get really good kernel weight, you can make up some ground, which we're getting a lot of late rain, which is really good because it's helping fill out these kernels, fill out the weight. So we're 16 kernels around. So what you do now, you get your calculator out. So you take your population, whatever corn seed population you planted, that's what you take. You take that number. We're on 26,000 on this dry land, so we take just 26. So you'll do 26 times rows long, or rows around if you want to go that way, 16 times 34 long equals that. So then the next thing you do is you divide that number by 90. 
But this is just a guess. Uh, you'll never know really what you got till you get the combine out there and get out there in the middle of the field and uh, actually see what it is uh, going through the combine. But this is what I got. So that's what we got on that little test. 157 bushels per acre for some dry land, 26,000 population corn. Like I said, I'm right up here. I pulled it up here on top of a hill. So, um, so hopefully there's a lot bigger cobs out there on these plants. But uh, anyway, I thought y'all enjoy seeing that. If you didn't know how to count kernels to get your bushels per acre, now hopefully you do. Let's go finish grabbing the tissue samples on the soybeans. I got one grain sorghum field left to do. So uh, we'll check that out and see what it looks like. But it's getting the truck, it's getting hot, let's go. So if y'all don't remember the last time I took tissue samples, what you have to do is you have to fill out this little bag that you send them in on. Uh, just ask for the grower's name, sample ID, uh, crop, date sampled, and then the most important thing is the stage of growth right there. And these soybeans in this particular field are probably at R2, what I'd say. They got some pies on them. So once I've made a loop, a big loop right here, pretty much in this area of the field, I grab enough leaves where if I squeeze them together, it would be about the size of a softball, then I have enough for our sample. Then we fold up the bag, throw it in the box, we move on to the next field. So here's the last field that I have to take samples um, of the grain sorghum. So we'll go out here and take a look at it. I've seen some stuff out in the grain sorghum that I didn't like. This is a whole new learning curve for us. We've never planted grain sorghum ever. So hopefully we can learn something this year and hopefully not make any mistakes next year. But this is what I've been seeing right here. I don't know if y'all can see that. You see those bugs? Those are aphids. And then the other thing is we got some stuff going on the leaves. Looking like some kind of disease. I don't know if that's part of the where we fertilized it earlier. I don't think it is. I think it's some kind of fungus or something going on. See all the see all those little splotches, round splotches. So this grain sorghum right here, the stage it's at, is just starting to shoot the flag leaf up. Uh, some of our older grain sorghum that we first planted, um, it's in the, uh, what do you call it? The boot, boot stage. That's where the seed head is just about to uh, make an appearance, come out of the leaves. And um, anyway, we got the same thing going up there with that. Got the aphids. Uh, we are going to put an insecticide out and we are going to fungicide them and that's what I'm going to be doing tomorrow We'll be up there at the gravel pit uh, it's, it's dry enough to run I think tomorrow if we don't get any rain today. We'll be up there tomorrow spraying some grain sorghum, but Anyway, that's the two things I see going on that I don't like and I know is not good for the plant uh, So hopefully we'll get the insecticide We'll take out any insects and all that and then the fungicide will help out with the uh, stuff going on the leaves, but there you go. That's our grain sorghum. Changing oil. Oh yeah. All right, that's it. Now we gotta get this to the UPS store, so we'll see y'all tomorrow.
So it's Tuesday morning and today it's going to be a spraying day and I'm going to show you what James did to my rogator. It probably looks a little different to y'all. So let's check it out. And what these things do, it helps protect the crops. Uh, later on in the season, our crops have lapped the middles. This row limbs or branches have joined the other row over here. And uh, what this does is it keeps the limbs and they just hit this fender right here and they just slide around this tire. And the same thing back there, so the tire does not grab those branches and stuff and just break them off. It, it really helps protect the crop uh, later on in the season. So anyway, we got them on, so we're ready to go the rest of the year with these. Uh, we'll be running through soybeans and cotton, and it uh, won't be hurting a thing. So um, first thing we got to do, we got to clean out my tank. Uh, I got my tank cleaner already up there. So we'll run some water through it about three or four times, cleaning it out and rinsing it through the booms. And then we're going to be headed up there to the gravel pit. We're going to be spraying some grain sorghum today. So let's get this thing started. One more thing. I know on the last video I put out, I had some people commenting about the shaky camera. Believe me, I know the shots are a little shaky. I get it. I edit all my videos. I know it's a little shaky. We're still trying to use this new camera. So if we can't get it figured out and get that stabilization a little bit better, We'll have to go back to the GoPros because they have excellent stabilization. But just hang in there. I know they're shaky. Um, we'll see if we can get it fixed. Now, let's get started. Schaefer spray still working. Still can do it with one finger. So apparently we got to run up to the gravel pit. Okay, we're just getting out here to the gravel pit and I've been on the phone with our agronomist and stuff. We're trying to get a game plan on what to do. Basically, we want to identify exactly what aphids we got out here. Uh, I know there's three different kinds you need to worry about. The um, one is a sugarcane aphid, the corn leaf aphid, and then the green bug aphid, maybe. So anyway, we're going to go out here and take a look at them because some of those can be really bad and then the other one, the variety that we planted should take care of one of them. But we're going to go take a look at them. And I also, I got Auburn, uh, they're coming today to meet with me. Uh, we did that nitrogen test down there at Grey Rocks with them. Anyway, they're coming today to uh, meet with me. So I think I'm going to grab some of these leaves that's got some of these aphids on them and uh, give them to them so they can take them back to Auburn and take a look at them and really identify exactly what I got. And also we do have some anthracnose type of uh, disease, fungus or whatever. I see that on the bottom leaves. I'm going to send that off with them too, let them identify that too. So let's walk out here, take a look at some bugs, see if we can figure out which one we got. But the bad thing about me looking at these is I'm colorblind. <laughs> and you really got to be able to tell the colors of some, but some of them had these little two things that shoot out the back called tailpipe. Anyway, I'll explain it later. So I'm thinking all these spots right here on the leaf, or I'm thinking that's the anth anthracnose. Is that how you say it? Anthracnose. See all those spots. But uh, there is a lot going on on these leaves. You see all those bugs? y'all see that that's down in the world one of these bugs see I can see him right here it's got little black tail pipes coming out the back two little black pipes and I can see it I don't know if y'all can see it on camera but that's the uh, corn leaf aphid or the sugar cane but look how many are on here And uh, they're not hard to find. They're everywhere. I 
here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna tear off some of those leaves, put them in some Ziploc bags. We're meeting, like I said, we're meeting Pablo with Auburn University at the shop today at one o'clock. I'm gonna give him, give him, oh, I can't talk, it's getting hot. I'm gonna give him those uh, samples, let him take them back to Auburn. Number one, see if this, that anthracnose, uh, if that's the fungus that's on the plant. And then number two, identify all those insects that's on the plant. We're a little early on the fungicide, so we got a little time. The plan is to just get all the chemical ordered, wait till we get the tissue samples back, see if we need to add any micronutrients and stuff. And uh, also wait to hear uh, the identification of all those bugs and uh, the fungicide, if that's that anthracnose. Get all that information back and then we'll hit it probably first of next week because we're still a little early. You want to hit it in the middle of flowering and we are just at the beginning of uh, seeing that seed head. So we got a little time. Basically what I'm saying, I thought I was going to spray up here today. That's out. Let's go back to shop. Okay, we've already had a change of plans. Uh, we're gonna take the Rogator right now to Blackwell's Bend. I forgot that I'm meeting Pablo at one o'clock right after lunch. So we're gonna jump in the Rogator, top it off with some diesel and death, then we're getting on the road. Ah, it's good stuff. y'all see all that water it's wet it's extremely wet i don't know if y'all saw that on the time lapse it may have been going too fast but uh a lot of water standing out in the fields but definitely no spraying down here today so we'll go back to the shop we'll uh definitely get the chemical trailer loaded up get everything we need and uh probably come back down here tomorrow Hopefully some of this water will have dried up because we got plenty of sunshine and it's really hot. So anyway, Mark's just pulling up. So we're going to head back to the shop and uh, see what else we can get into. But yeah, too wet for here.
Okay, so the last thing we're gonna do today, we're gonna walk the track hoe down there to the river. Uh, remember those concrete I beams that we put down there where we're gonna uh, tie up the river screen? We have never poured those uh, holes in. Um, it's been wet, the river's been up over the holes, and finally the river's down. And we've been getting so much rain, we just have not had an opportunity to do it. So tomorrow morning, seven o'clock, we'll be pouring concrete. We got the concrete truck lined up, so Dad wants to go ahead and get the uh, track hoe down there where it needs to be. Probably gonna have to pour the concrete in this bucket and then use a bucket to take it down there and uh, basically put it in the hole with this uh, with the track hoe. So uh, yeah, that's probably gonna be it for this video, guys. So thanks for watching. If you don't mind, do me a huge favor. Click the little thumb if you like the video. It means you liked it and uh, really helps our channel grow. So please do that if you don't mind. And then if you want to subscribe, come on, click the uh, Triple R Farms logo over here. It'll walk you through subscribing. Doesn't cost you a thing. It's free. It just uh, notifies you when we put out the next video. So um, anyway, thanks for watching, guys. And uh, like always, we will see y'all on the next one. We're out.